Hi everyone. So I promised to catch up and uh, provide you with a video for a live demo part, uh, which was part initially planned to be a part of our secure authentication and SSO for applications in hybrid SAP landscapes webinar that took place on 4th of August. So here it is. Okay, we talk about the best practice authentication flow. So user wants to access a application regardless of where it is running. The application forwards the request to the trusted IDP, which is the IAS in the best case when it comes to SAP applications. Then the IAS based on uh, conditions will be able to forward employees to a corporate IDP where the employee has to authenticate which can be done based on various conditions and even single sign on. And then it will be yeah, equipped with a SAML token and the SAML token will then be used to uh, propagate the identity towards the identity directory to the IAS user store that really then issues the token used for single sign on to the target application. Okay, and this is just what I wanted to show you in our small demo part. So basically, I've prepared a demo with two scenarios. So the first scenario is to show you access to a Fiori launchpad running in the BTP in the sub account um, from an employee perspective and from an external user, from a partner perspective, together with the Azure AD as a corporate IDP. And the second scenario will be to really access a on-premise S4 HANA system, so the Fiori launchpad which is completely seamlessly and is based on Kerberos. So let's start with the first demo. Our cloud application, Fiori Central Launchpad has been established. So there's an OpenID Connect application. It's a BTP sub account. So we have our um, corporate identity provider configured in the identity authentication service, which is using, in this case, my Azure tenant. And we have my test account that really is used for the first scenario. So now let's try to open up a demo browser and let's connect to the application in the cloud. This screen is just for demo purposes. So I just click here to really forward the authentication request towards the identity authentication service and it should end up on the login screen of the IAS. So now I can log in with my employee account, which is typically an email address. Based on that email address, if I select continue, I will be forwarded to the Azure Active Directory domain. In this case, it's my test tenant, so I can log in here with my corporate credentials. Also, this could be completely transparent for the end user based on single sign on, but in this case, just enter the password. Now it comes back with a SAML assertion to the IIS and then the IIS really uh, uses a SAML um, connection or in this case, it is really a OAuth2 um, grant type authorization code, which happens between the identity authentication server and the BTP. So we can see a lot of action here in the SAML tracer. So the first really request response is really exchanged between Azure and IIS. And then we can see a code exchange between the identity authentication and the target application. So you see the IIS is really doing SAML to OpenID protocol conversion in that space. Also, I'm logged in, of course. Obviously, I'm <laughs> authenticated to my uh, Fiori launchpad in this way. Now let's open another incognito window and exactly use the same URL. Now we want to connect from an external user perspective, so we use the same service. We also end up on the identity authentication login screen. And now we can log in with either an email address, or in this case, I'm just using a login name, which is a user that I have created in the identity authentication. I can show it to you. So we have our application. In the application, we have, of course, configured conditional authentication rules, allowing us to forward the identity based on an email domain to Azure and to authenticate all other accounts based on the identity authentication user database. In addition to that, we have configured risk-based authentication rules. And this allows us to make use of a rule framework, for example, enforce two-factor authentication for user type partner 
and only allow users that are part of the exciting webinar demo to access this application. Otherwise, default action is denied. Now let's take a look at the partner users or the external user account that we have created for this demo. This account has a password, obviously. So we have created this user with a password and it's from user type partner in, in contrast with my employee account. So the idea is now if we log in based on the risk-based authentication framework detects the local user, I have to authenticate with a password as well. And in the next step, you can see that I have to set up the two-factor authentication because I'm accessing this application for the first time. So what I have to do now with my mobile device, just using the Microsoft Authenticator in this example, adding a new account, which creates a new profile. And then I generate a one-time passcode and type it in here. And that's it. I can select continue and I've set up my external user for multi-factor authentication. Next step, I'm logged in, same way, same application. However, I'm now the partner company user. Now let's switch to scenario two. Seamless single sign-on experience from a corporate domain joint Windows PC to an on-premises S4 HANA system where the S4 HANA system is connected to the identity authentication service based on SAML, but the authentication from the user towards the identity authentication service is done using SP Nego, so the IAS trusts the corporate domain. So in order to show this to you in the first step, I would clear the Kerberos ticket cache. So there is no Kerberos tickets available here. In the next step, we just open up a browser and we connect to demo application, which is our S4 system. Now you see there's an authentication flow happening and obviously I don't need to enter a password. I don't need to do anything. So I'm authenticated in the background based on Kerberos authentication. And then based on SAML, I'm authenticated to my S4 HANA on-premises system. Users authenticated successfully, as you can see. And now let's take a look if we have a Kerberos token in the cache, and yes, we have one service ticket for that service, which is representing our um, identity authentication service tenant in the cloud, for which we have created a service user in the AD and exchanged a secret key, which is used then to decrypt the ticket. So now we are back on the IIS admin console. Let's go to the application, which represents our S4 on-premise system. We can see that this is a SAML application. It, uh, in the authentication and access tab, we have enabled the SPNego authentication for that system. That really means that once we configure the trust to our domain based on the tenant settings here and then the SPNego setup. So here we have a trust established to our domain secure.org. In this example, we have created a service account select the key type, in this case, AES 256 bit. We set a password for that user and based on that uh, key tab, we extract a key that we exchange with our identity authentication tenant. And this way, this tenant is able to decrypt Kerberos service ticket that have been encrypted by our domain. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to see you the next time. Get in touch with us for any further questions regarding single sign-on in hybrid environments. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.